Hey guys, how's it going? Uh, Dar Sebius here with another Sebius Speaks. Uh, today I want to look at the models from the End Times Warhammer Fantasy goodness so far because I am ridiculously excited. I cannot tell you how excited and how beautiful some of these models are and just the, how the source book and all that stuff has just made me want to get into Warhammer Fantasy and it's something that's going to happen soon but I needed to talk about the joys of some of these models because they are awesome absolutely awesome so without further ado uh, the book one of the end times is all about this man he is the supreme lord of the undead he is coming back and he is serious we have Nagash himself um, we have Nagash on the uh, left there and then we also have the source books uh, there as well um, the source book and the army book for him uh, but let's get that out of the way and let's let's have a proper good look at Nagash in all his glory. Uh, the detail is amazing. Um, he's got his uh, spirit sort of slaves uh, flowing around him. He's got his books of Nagash. He's got his staff. He's got his ridiculous bony codpiece that kind of looks like it's uh, overcompensating for something. But just the detail and wonder on there is just insane. And what we have on the Games Watch website is uh, Nagash, Supreme Lord of the Undead and Father of Necromancy has returned and Warhammer and the Warhammer world will never be the same again. Resurrected by a dark ritual, the immortal Lord of Death is an awe-inspiring centerpiece miniature born aloft by tendrils of ethereal energy and tormented spirits. His unique silhouette looms over the battlefield with an air of that promises to usher in a new era of darkness. Uh, it's a multi-plastic kit, equipped with a ray of the Gash's most precious artifacts uh, upon his brow, sits the crown of sorcery, while his hands grip um, either Alakanash, the staff of uh, of power, or Zephyr, N Zephyr N Nibta, the mortis blade. Uh, he's clad in Morricane, the black armor, and orbiting um, around his sorcerer's frame are nine ancient books, uh, each one uh, containing the terrible secrets of animating the dead. Uh, he can summon either reading uh, from one of the ancient tomes, the Libra Mortis, or holding the staff of power aloft with the Mortis Blade secured to his waist. Alternately, you can replace the staff with the Mortis Blade um, and to add an ethereal energy that surrounds Nagash by equipping him a spirit entwined arm, uh, the f and the full rules for him are in the book. Uh, he's just beautiful, uh, and he is as epic and huge as he kind of is uh, in real life in the, in the scale. Uh, there we had a little look at him, but he's just amazing. Um, I'm kind of falling for, for Nagash. He's always been one of these animatic kind of characters that I sort of heard a bit about, but never really kind of got into the fluff. And uh, I've got to be honest, uh, it's forced me. I am I'm tearing myself through Nagash the Sorcerer at the moment, uh, enjoying it immensely, just with the anticipation of getting back up to and reading the latest book and getting more in depth with the. Uh, the End Times, Book 1, Nagash, and all that goodness. But let's have another quick look at him. He's just beautiful. The, uh, yeah, the indentured spirits, uh, indentured spirits, sorry, um, flying around him and his books of power and his staff. He is a bad mamma jamba, and by gosh, does he not look it. Um, so yeah, he's just wonderful. Uh, next we will move on to Arkan the Black here riding his epic uh, undead steed with spirits around him um, looking like a, another bad bad chap just looks freaking epic um, he is the Arkham the Black the mon the uh, Montark of the of Sacrament he is the guy that brought Nagash back uh, the, that's that's his story um, and there's a little what we've got here so Arkham the Black is Nagash foremost lieutenant and an adept student of his of his master's sorceries. Ever a faithful servant, Arkan oversaw the preparation of the great necromancer's return, and once again he is the forefront of his master's schemes for domination. Uh, the multi pop has a kit, makes Arkan the Black, Montauk the Sacrament. Uh, he is armed with weapons forged by Nagash's own hand, Zephyr Kar, the Tomb Blade, and uh, Kenash An, the Staff of Spirits, uh, which were awarded to him when he was reborn as the Lich King. Uh, riding the Dread Bristle, known as Razorak, the Doom of Traitors, Archon presides over Nagash's enemies, ensuring no detail escapes his unblinking gaze. Uh, and the, that is the Montauk kit, which also can be built to um, to be uh, Manfred von Karstein, 
Montauk of Night or Neferata Montauk of Blood. But right now we're looking at Archon the Black. Uh, he is a bad Mava Jamba and just looking serious. The Dread Abyssals, I've got to say, the mounts look wonderful. Um, I love the necrotic power coming from his staff and kind of webbing out behind him. It's just, these models are just disgusting. They're huge and expensive and beautiful. I want them, but I can't have them. So I will ogle them and talk about them with joy because they are such beautiful, beautiful thing. So that's Archon. His, yeah, he's the, the trusty lieutenant. Um, he, he is his number one guy, uh, even in Nagash the Sorcerer, uh, which just kind of jumps between uh, the, the, the periods shortly after his father's death, where he's made uh, Grand Aerophant, uh, or he is kind of pr proceeding as Grand Aerophant and presumably scheming to gain power for himself. Uh, and then it also is cuts into the future, uh, where he already has usurped power and is attacking, and is Archon leading the charge there as well um, from those early days and then from reading the uh, the end times book it's uh, Arkham the Black that was spending all his time um, basically manipulating Manfred and just taking on uh, the Bretonia to, to take, take back artifacts because basically Arkham has been on a crazy mission to bring Nagash back that is the whole story beginning the beginning not, not the story the beginning of the story uh, for Nagash Book 1 is Archon just getting all his knickknacks, his staff and his crown and his armour and his books getting them all together to bring him back with one big epic uh, summoning uh, which he does uh, and that's awesome uh, so next we have Manfred von Karstein uh, he is the uh, Montauk of Night and he again he's got a Kind of, kind of darker, more kind of meaty, still bony, but more of a meaty bone with the black kind of uh, dread of going on. It looks a bit like a um, can't think what they're called now, but those the the dragony things that the vampires have. As you can tell, I'm more of a 40k player. I'm not huge of my uh, uh, fantasy uh, lore and stuff, but I'm I'm willing to learn and wanting to learn. Uh, so we have Manfred von Casting. From Karstein, uh, he serves as Nagash's right hand, uh, as an occupation which he greatly resents, uh, as he is ever watchful for a means to free himself from the servitude to the great necromancer. Uh, though some warriors judge themselves by standards of their enemies they vanquish, uh, Manfred is no slave to conventions of honor and glory, or glory. In this way, he's no slave to the conventions of honor or glory. Uh, ends concern him far more than means. If a choice falls between slaughtering the meek and vanquishing the mighty, he chooses slaughter. Uh, yeah, this is the multi-part kit again. Um, going casting one type of knight. Uh, he's armed with the, with Gistvo, uh, sword of the unholy power, and clad in the magical armor of Templehof. Uh, Manfred rides the dread abyss, or known as uh, Ashigarath Gora, uh, Gorger upon the meek, uh, for it feasts upon those too callow to raise a hand in their own defense. So it's a bad, bad dread abyss that likes to eat. Eat weak people, uh, and riding upon it is the epic uh, Lord of Sylvania, the kind of vampire uh, king uh, of the situation. And he, yeah, he is serving as the right hand of the Gash, although, as I said, very epically resentfully. Um, in the kind of in the beginnings of uh, the end times, Archon kind of goes to, to Manfred and says, I need your books and gash that you've got because we need to bring the gash back. And Renfrew's like, I'm not having any of that. And they have a big kind of fight on a bridge and neither of them can actually really do much. So they decide to call it a day and be friends. Uh, well, frenemies, um, I suppose. And he kind of constantly is thinking about scheming and trying to take uh, down Archon and to kind of subvert the power to bring the gash back. But it just keeps not being able to do that. He gets being stymied by other people getting in his way and just the power of Nagash is far too great for him to go, do you know what? No. No, I won't join you. Oh dear, you've killed me. Okay, yeah, maybe I will join you and I'll get a cool, badass coward-eating horse for <laughs> horse? Uh, well, mount dread abyssal thing uh, for my troubles, which is not bad at all uh, and rather awesome. Uh, so next we have uh, Neferata. I believe, um, 
how do we how, do, how are we pronouncing that? Yeah, Neferata. Uh, she is Montark of Blood. Uh, we see her there. She's got a bit more of a red thing going on, the blood theme. She again, the Dread Abyssal is looking beautiful. The base, the spirits around her, her own stuff, and kind of the the uh, fabric flapping in the wind. It's just gorgeous. These are gorgeous models. The Montarks are just incredible. So what have we got here? So legend tells of a vampire queen who resides high in the world's Ed mountains. Uh, the queen of the mysteries does indeed exist. She fought at Nagash's side against the armies of Nekarara. And I do apologize if my pronunciation is awful. I'm kind of guessing. Uh, Nehekara. Um, yeah, she fought against, against the armies of Nehekara. And when the battle was lost, she fled from his wrath. Uh, those who know her call her Neferata, which means she who is beautiful in death. Now, after thousands of years, the great necromancer has returned, and Neferata is presented with a choice. Betray Nagash to his foes, or seek to gain redemption, uh, gain his redemption, and once more earning place at his side. Um, the multi part plastic kit uh, has her Neferata Montak of Blood. She is armed with the treasures of old Lamia, uh, Ak Akhmet Kar, the Dagger of Jet, whose curved edges scream with death, uh, with the death agonies of innocence, and Akhan Seth, the Staff of Pain, whose enchantments add crippling agonies to any sorcery she wields. Neferata rises into battle upon the dread abyssal known as Nagadron, uh, the Adavor, or Adavor, Adavor uh, who happily gorges himself upon Neferata's living enemies as eagerly as he does the souls of the dead. <laughs> Which is just kind of a beautiful thing. The model is beautiful. She is a beautiful dead vampire queen. She was been buddies with with Nagash. Uh, she kind of found Nagash and fled him because his wrath is kind of epic. And you do not want to tick off the uh, the Grand Master Lord of the Undead uh, because he is a bad bad man and will do bad bad things to you as well. The uh, the people of Nehekara know um, and even. The daughter of Sun uh, knows all all too well, um, but yeah, she she's looking epic. She's got her own dread abyssal that is eating kind of flesh and spirits, uh, not kind of as picky as Manfred's. Apparently, if Manfred wants the milk toast cravens uh, to be eaten who don't raise the sword, uh, <laughs> kind of imagine him skirting around the edges of battle, whereas. Hers is kind of eating flesh and spirit, so surely that's kind of a double dip. If you're eating someone alive, surely then you could eat their spirit as well. Good times. Um, so that is the Montarks and the Gash. Quick look at the Gash again. He is the man in charge, looking beautiful. And then we have uh, Archon, the lieutenant, looking epic there. Manfred, the king, kind of vampire king of Sylvania. His right hand man and Neferata, uh, the old ally, will she remain? Yeah, true to him. Well, I I would remain true to someone who had a, gave me a badass steed like that. But um, yeah, <laughs> so that's those. Uh, then we move on to the Morgast. Now the Morgast are one of the first things that really kind of made me get quite excited. Um, they're incredible looking models, and then when I actually read the fluff. The, the fluff is insane. So on the left here we have the Morgast Harbingers. Now the, the, as we can see they've got two massive blades, uh, they're flying with kind of necrotic powers kind of or spirit thing coming from their bony tattered wings and just generally looking serious. Um, so yeah and this 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 bit of fluff just makes me so happy. Uh, once they were known as the Hammerai, the winged heralds of of Tra or Petra, um, P T R A. I'm imagining it's Tra, uh, the god of light, who were sent to destroy the great necromancer. When they failed, Nagash took their ruined corpses and created a host of sentient vassals to lead his armies. Thus, the Morghas were <laughs> born. Now. Tra or Tra, the uh, sun god, sent his kind of angelic minions to take Nagash down, and Nagash slayed them and turned their corpses into skeletal death 
angels of his own bidding. Now, if you don't think that's some awesome shit, get out of my face, because that is amazing. And the models are beautiful. Um, so the Morty Park kit comes from uh, made as two Morgars harbingers, uh, possessed with the might of demigods. They wield swords and glaives fashioned long ago in Charles' uh, solar forge, uh, the blaze with spirit energies of the slain. The souls trapped within, uh, within driven to drag others to share their fate. So basically, they are these are demon, angel, skeletal, undead. Not really demon, but undead skeletal angels of death. Still wielding the epic blades that the, the sun god made for them, but now uh, they are, I've got souls trapped within them that are so kind of stricken and, and sad with being trapped in the blade that all they want to do is <laughs> draw more souls in them. Maybe they're lonely. Maybe they need more company. Um, they haven't got a soul to talk to, <laughs> and and they want they want more company within the blades. Obviously, um, yeah. I don't know what to say about that, other than that's kind of awesome. And then we also have the uh, Morgast uh, Archai uh, on the right here, uh, with their rather cool uh, halberdy, bony halberdy things. And they seem to have a bit more armour and stuff going on there with their crazy curved helmeted heads and things. Um, so let's talk a bit about those. So the Archai are Nagash's elite guard um, and the greatest of the Morgast. Only Nagash's closest lieutenants can command them, and only the mightiest heroes of the mortal race have the power to defeat them. So the multi part kit comes, uh, assembles two of these Morgast Archai. They're clad in ebon wrought armour which channels the magic of the, of the world into their accursed forms. Uh, possessed with the might of demigods, they wield swords and glaives that blaze with the spirit energies of the slain, the souls trapped within them, driven to drag others to share their fate. Uh, so those huge, big uh, glaives and kind of, yeah, blades that they have. Again, see, sucking souls within them. Uh, but they are possessed of a... They have the Evan wrought armour that feeds on the magic. So not only is Nagash wanting to close off the warp, not only does he want to make his uh, unholy necromantic magic the only magic and power that there is in the old world, his minions have armor that just soaks in power, like magical power, like solar batteries, I imagine, which is just, again, epic. And the models, look at them. They're beautiful. They're wonderful. I want them all. Give them to me, please. <laughs> Oh dear. So um, next we have the Spirit Host. Not necessarily my favourite model. Um, they look cool. They look all right on their own. They look much cooler. The uh, spirits when they're kind of flying around. Um, the other characters, as we see, kind of with Archon, they're kind of raining around the tail of his dread abyssal, and then with Nagash, they're kind of flowing all around him. Uh, the Spirit Hosts on themselves, they. They do look kind of cool. They look much better than the kind of previous spirit hosts, which looked like uh, wailing, uh, <laughs> very odd kind of, I don't know, children in, almost children with sheets over their heads, uh, if I'm thinking of the right model. Um, so these are definitely an improvement, and they're jagged, kind of, they've got a bit of a dryad -y kind of feel to them, uh, even though they are just kind of jagged spirits. Uh, but Sylvania is rich in the spirits of the dead for... For it has long history of misery and suffering, and it has arrived with polluting warpstone. On the field of battle, these vengeful apparitions cluster together into hosts that drift that drift slowly towards their warm-blooded victims with a terrible inevitability. Even a cannibal strike will not damage a spirit host, for they exist only partially in this world. However, their twilight state does not render their spirit, th these spirits harmless. They can claw a mortal's flesh with long, taloned hands, stealing the victim's beating heart with nothing more than a touch. And the kit comes with enough for three of those bad boys. And yeah, I don't know really what more you can say. They are tormented spirits of the dead that are going to come in inexorably, slowly drifting towards you and then rake out your face uh, with their kind of Chlory, chlory fingers and uh, big bombs not going to do much to them. I'm not sure. You probably need some kind of magical 
spell or magical weapon to take these guys down is what would be my guess. Um, <clears throat> not particularly educated guess, but a guess nonetheless. <laughs> so next we get to what uh, kind of the reason that I really wanted to do this video in the first place because uh, I got so excited. Gut rot spew. <sighs> Just drink that in. The name alone. It should be savoured like a fine red wine or a fine brew of Nurgle's diseased cauldron. Gut rot spume. If I ever make an ale, I'm going to call it gut rot spume. Um, he's just wonderful. Uh, the detail on him, his huge kind of leather bound corroded axe, uh, the, the kind of jutted bony spines coming from his pauldron uh, his kind of balaclava-esque helmet with its huge spike, not to mention the huge kind of warping uh, tentacles like coming from where his left arm should be and from out of his stomach, there's kind of a spiked maw coming out of his belly at some point there, he's got the rusted symbol of Nurgle, he's got tattered loincloth going on, heads hung around his belt. He's a beautiful, beautiful monstrosity. Godfrey Spume is a mighty champion. Uh, he's a, no, he's not a champion at all. Godfrey Spume is a mighty chaos lord and a fearsome warrior. Brave and tenacious, his flesh has been blessed by Father Nurgle with bounteous mutations. Uh, so the six peak kiss comes to make him clad in chaos armor uh, that has been pitted and eroded by his oozing flesh. He is armed with a great weapon and a mass of seven flailing tentacles, which ensure the commander of the greatest plague fleet of the north is at home in the sea as he is on the land. Uh, and the rules and things will be found for him coming along with the miniature and also White Dwarf issue 37, which is something I may need to get hold of because boy, oh boy, oh boy, is he beautiful. Gutrot. Gutrot, how I love you and your tentacle arms I want to give you I don't know, 8 plus 13. I'm going to give you 13 high fives <laughs> for all your tentacles because you're just a beautiful, beautiful man. And he is the lord uh, kind of of this plague host that is coming from the north, which I'm so excited about as, uh, as, a, as a follower of Nurgle. It's a beautiful, wonderful thing. And he is kind of other... His elite guards are the Blight Kings. Uh, we see them here. Uh, this is one sort of setup. They come with a multi kind of setup thing going on. Uh, we've got rusted shields and bent hammers. We've got crazy horns and skulls, mutations. We've got kind of nerglings and skulls hanging out of bellies, huge gaps in the like stomachs, and just really nasty stuff. But in a beautiful way. The detail is insane. This one, we've got a kind of tongue lolling out of a mouth that's come out of someone's stomach. This guy is practically turned into a chubby plague bearer uh, with his kind of rusted weapons. Uh, there's a guy there with a big kind of bell, to tolling bell of Nurgle. Uh, we've got some standards, some more armor, and just some more warped kind of crazy arms and things going on. They're just beautiful. I can't get enough of these guys. They just so disgusting and so wonderful I just so yeah these are the putrid blight kings so the blight kings are champions of Nurgle once chaos warriors they have proven themselves loyal and valuable servants the lord of decay and so now they've been blessed with his many diseases this is a hundred and five piece kit uh, makes five putrid blight uh, Blight Kings. Each model can be assembled in at least two distinct ways. Uh, plus, you have the option to create a champion in position and a standard bearer. You can ensure that each of your Blight Kings looks totally unique by combining 21 weapon arms with 11 torsos and 17 head options. These are some serious, build your own, unique, messed up, bad man pajamas. And they just look insane. They're just disgusting absolutely horrible but in a wonderful wonderful way Nurgle just does what he does and he does it so well and these models are just looking wonderful and making me so happy and making me desperate to get involved 
in Warhammer Fantasy. And I think the next time we head up to Sarah's folks uh, to see her brother, I may demand that he teaches me and plays a game uh, of fantasy with me because it's something that I need to have in my life because these models are wonderful. Uh, let's kind of just go through a quick rundown of these models again before uh, I wrap up and kind of call this a day. So we've got Nagash, the man himself, wonderful, beautiful. Archon, the black, his lieutenant, looking resplendent on his uh, Dread Abyssal there. We've got Manfred, kind of vampire king of Sylvania, on his coward eating <laughs> doom, uh, Neferata, the uh, Montauk of Blood, the other vampire queen uh, from the World's Ed Mountains, on her mount that, like, on a dread abyssal that eats uh, living and dead alike, uh, spirits alike. Um, we had the spirit host, the untamed and indentured spirits of Sylvania. Um, what else we got? We got the Morghast, uh, the Harbingers, and the Archai with their soul stealing weapons and just magic absorbing uh, armor, and generally just being look what I can do if you try and send angels to mess with me. I'll turn them into horrific monstrosities that do my bidding and serve as my elite guard. What more could you ask for there? Um, and then Gut Rot Spume, beautiful, disgusting. Chaos Lord and the Blight Kings, his champions in their disgusting, disgusting, beautiful glory. So yeah, um, that's the End Times model so far. Uh, I just wanted to talk a bit about them. Um, I might try and do some more of these videos about new things coming out and uh, just generally getting excited about models because they're that good and I want to get excited about them. Uh, but this has been a Sebius Speaks. I'm Darth Sebius. This is for Allos Index, a place for all things geeky gaming. Um, that's allosindex.com. We're mainly based on Tumblr, uh, best place to get hold of us. But we are on Facebook and Twitter and YouTube and all those good things. We're covering tabletop, uh, video games, board games, card games. We've got artwork, books and comics, tabletop, uh, as I said, sorry, fantasy mixed games. All that good stuff. And if you want to share something with us, if you want to give your opinion, a review, want to talk about something that you like, whether it's old or new, if it's geeky gaming, you're more than welcome to submit it and we'll get it up on the blog. And if you have an idea about an article or a video or anything you want to do kind of ongoing, um, then get in touch with us and we can work at you in uh, part of the blog and doing that because it's all about sharing the joys of geeky gaming and my word. These models have given me some serious, serious joy. So again, I'm Darcevius, and I'm sure I'll catch you guys soon. Taddy bye.